Hi everybody and welcome to today's LEGO Technic video. Over the last few weeks I've been presenting different two-speed automatic gearbox designs and they've all been based on the principle of having from the input two different paths that are added up through a differential to create the overall output. And the idea is to have uh, one path with for example a gearing ratio of A, a second path with B to give us an overall gearing ratio of the average of A and B and then when the uh, gears need to switch down we disengage path B to reduce the overall output ratio at the output. So the method I've been using that disengage that secondary path uh, with gearing ratio B has been to use the regular LEGO Technic switch with a orange rotary catch underneath and as you're all probably familiar the way that works is that we've got the switch in the middle that engages or disengages that uh, red clutch gear which can then drive a secondary gear so as we uh, drive the input like this it's disengaged and then by rotating orange catch it moves that switch across and now engages that, uh, that secondary gear that is your output now the problem with the switching mechanism is that there's a lot of torque on this path going to this output gear then it becomes very difficult to disengage the switch from the clutch gear because you end up with a lot of friction uh, in between the clutch gear. So for example if we've got the clutch gear like this and we hold the red clutch gear tight and then try to disengage the, uh, the switch it does become very difficult and you need a lot of torque on that orange rotary catch in order to be able to disengage and pull this out. And this has been a real problem for some of my previous designs. So to get around this problem I looked at some of my previous two-speed automatic gearbox designs and I found this one that I did a while ago that uses a worm gear for torque detection. Now the way you can use a worm gear for torque detection for example is by looking at this example here that if you've got the axle rotating that worm gear you can see that linear motion in that direction and that motion is pushing on the uh, teeth of the gear underneath. Now, because you've got that linear force in that direction, if, the, uh, if there's some sort of loading on that output gear, what happens is as you rotate the worm gear, it creates a counter force. And if the worm gear can actually move, it'll start moving as soon as there's any sort of loading on that output. And that can be used as a torque detection mechanism and consequently for uh, changing gears once the torque is high enough. Okay, I'll just demonstrate how this gearbox works with the worm gear as torque detection. So we'll turn it on, you can see the worm gear rotating underneath, we've got the output at the top. Since I put some loading on the output, we can see the worm gear housing start to move and engage the second gear. Now the way the second gear is engaged, it uses this bevel gear here to engage onto a secondary path uh, inside. Then that adds onto the differential at the top to change gears. So as you can see, as I hold that, it switches gears to a lower gear and you know, it switches back again. Now there are a number of issues with this gearbox design and implementation, one of the main ones being that the main power path is travelling through the torque detector and like I've talked about in previous videos it's a good idea to separate out your main power path from your torque detection path because the torque detector actually um, incurs quite a few power losses with the uh, counter torque that it's producing on that uh, main path. The other issue as well is that instead of uh, disengaging a gear, in this case I'm engaging a gear when I'm switching gears, and that creates a more complex secondary path. So like I've talked about as well, it's a, it's a better idea to disengage rather than to engage. Um, however, with this worm gear idea, I really had an opportunity to combine that with my other gearbox designs to come up with a, an improved version. Okay, by combining the idea of using a worm gear as a torque detector, I've come up with a new design of a gearbox. Uh, here it is, it's a two-speed automatic gearbox design. Uh, what's great about this particular design, it's got a much better shape that's more uh, useful for implementation, for example, in the car. On the left here we've got our input, on the right we've got the output, and here we've got all the gearing, differentials and things like that. Uh, here's our worm uh, torque detector that switches gears. It's probably easier if I draw this on a diagram to explain kind of how it works. So what we've got is we've got our input on the left. That input feeds into like a summing differential. We have a branch coming off that's got a switch which either engages or disengages that switch feeds back into that summing differential depending if that's connected or not uh, the output of that then goes into another differential that sums up and one branch goes through our kind of worm gear torque detector I'm drawing that like that and that feeds back into here gets added up gives our output and then the, the torque detector worm gear then connects back to that switching mechanism to change the gear so once there's enough torque on that it'll uh, disengage or engage that path depending on how it's configured okay so I'll just explain a bit more about this gearbox implementation in terms of this diagram so what we've got underneath is on the left uh, there's the input 
that input drives through a 1 to 3 gearing ratio onto the first summing differential so that is this path here is a 1 third gearing ratio onto that differential there uh, that differential then drives onto this differential here which is the uh, torque detector differential uh, it's got this path here which is for the torque detection and then it goes straight to the output uh, over here so like I said this is the torque detection part uh, this drives onto the worm gear underneath so we've got the worm gear embedded in this housing and that housing uh, can move as there's torque detection and that allows uh, this to disengage or engage a gear um, just down here it's using a bevel gear in this case I'm disengaging and that is disengaging this path uh, going back to that summing differential and this path goes through this uh, this quite special setup what this differential allows me to do is create a one-third gearing ratio and also prevent back propagation once this is disconnected so you don't want this to rotate backwards once it's disconnected because we'll lose uh, the power at the output and I'll talk about that more in a minute so like I said that connects back to the housing of that main uh, summing differential over here now in terms of the gearing ratio so like I said I've got a, a one-third coming into here now this path is also one-third so what happens is one-third plus one-third gives us an overall gearing ratio of roughly two-thirds and then once this is disengaged it'll switch between uh, from that two-thirds back down to just this main path here of one-third so that means there's a 50% a reduction in the speed at the output and uh, subsequently a, a, a doubling of the torque now it's probably more than that because once we disengage this path we've got fewer losses because this path is introducing friction and losses on the main output so once that's disengaged uh, it actually improves the overall um, efficiency of the of the gearbox so just coming back to this particular uh, configuration of this differential like I said before this creates a special condition where um, we can drive gears in this direction but we don't get back propagation I'll just show you this uh, small implementation of that so if you configure a differential like this what you find is that you can rotate this part and that will generate rotation at the output and the gearing ratio between this point and that point is one third however if you try to rotate the red axle you find that it, you can't rotate it and this is quite a, an interesting phenomenon it's, uh, it's, it's, I find it very useful in some of my implementations when I first came across it it was kind of baffling and it, uh, to be honest it still is, is a bit baffling as to why this uh, works like this um, however it, it doesn't really matter what the reason is you can make good use of it it doesn't allow back propagation and that is really useful in this, this kind of gearbox design now you may have noticed I started making use of the latest LEGO Technic differentials that have come out in some of the more recent sets and I've become a big fan of this differential uh, what I've found is it's uh, because of the housing it's, uh, it's a lot stronger you do find with some of the uh, older initial differentials that under a lot of torque they, they tend to warp and the um, bevel gears tend to slip um, and the other great thing about this differential as well is because it's got a different uh, bevel gear on the housing there you've got uh, several options you can connect to it um, you know, in a perpendicular fashion or just straight uh, and unlike this differential you pretty much always have to go in this direction and the other version you pretty much always have to go in this direction so yes I'm a big fan of these uh, they're also more compact smaller they're a lot stronger and give you more options so I highly recommend trying these out for your designs okay to the moment we've been waiting for on the right here we've got the 9 volt power supply that connects through to the battery box and connects onto the large power functions motor uh, I'll just turn it on so here we've got the output rotating as I put some loading on the output you can hear it slow down and if I put sufficient loading on that output we will switch gears by using that worm gear uh, torque detector there we go just like that and now the output torque is a lot larger uh, it's like I said before it's running at half the speed or double the torque that's it switching back and again switching gears from first gear to second gear creating a much more powerful output torque Okay, I've now connected the gearbox to my torque creation gadget. The way this gadget works is I've got a number of these white uh, clutch gears and what we can do is connect them or disconnect them by using these small axles to prevent the rotation. And what that does was I've got 10 and it allows me to create 10 levels of uh, resistant torque uh, to test out the gearbox. So we'll just turn it on. Uh, it's now rotating like that. Uh, we'll put on level one. That's creating a certain amount of loading. And uh, this gearbox handles that fine. Uh, two levels of loading is fine as well 
they're level three. Uh, as you can hear, the motor's starting to struggle. You can see it's wanted to start to uh, switch gears. Go to four, and that's pretty much the gear switching point. Go to five, and now on that secondary gear. And now we find we can add pretty much all the levels of torque and the gearbox handles that fine. So this is a fantastic result. The gearbox is working really well. We can disengage these again and you'll find that the gearbox will switch back. Now it is a little bit crunchy again because we are not using the uh, Lego switch. It, uh, it, those bevel gears do, um, when they do a mesh, they can of course uh, create that crunching sound. Okay, now for the final test, I've got the gearbox connected up to this gadget here. What this allows me to do is test the pulling power of the gearbox. I've got a pair of luggage scales that's connected to some rubber bands. The luggage scales connected to the string, which are going to be wound up uh, by this pulley here, connected to the gearbox. When I turn it on, it'll wind up that string and start pulling, and we can measure how much pulling power it has. So let's try it. Let's turn it on. The scales are on zero, and let's turn on the gearbox. Here is pulling, it's got about 0.4 of clearance, 400 grams, and now to switch gears. The gear switch gives me a lot more power to at least double. We're now at 1.2. The gearbox is starting to fail a little bit. There is some issues there with it uh, skipping. But yeah, the overall pulling power is about 1.4, 1.5 kilograms. Let's go back, and as we go back, we uh, disengages, we'll try it again, we can watch the gearbox as it starts to pull, it switches gears, look at that, much more pulling power, and eventually the gearbox does start to fail in terms of the gear crunching, but I think it is, uh, can be improved with better framing. Uh, it is very powerful though, 1.4 kilograms. And unwind it. Give it a rest. Alright, that's my latest two-speed automatic gearbox. I think this is a much better design and I think it's ready to go into a car to try to drive up a hill. Hope you got something out of this video. Hope you enjoyed yourself and please like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Thanks very much.